Michael Wizard was developed for a busy church who needed to find a better way to manage their hall bookings and invoicing. They found that most of the software on the market didn't meet their needs, so they asked us to build something to help them out. We figured that if they had that problem, so will many other church and village halls and community centres. Let's take a look at the software right now. Right along the top here, we can see the five main modules of the software, bookings, customers, invoices, payments and reports. And in this short demo, we'll have a quick look at each one of those sections. So let's start with bookings. Well, the centerpiece of the bookings is the calendar. In day view, we can see bookings uh, for each and every room. In week view, we can see them um, in a calendar like that. And in month view, the color coding represents which rooms they've got booked. So let's take a booking. So we're going to take a booking for the art group and um, they meet weekly and we'll book them through till the end of February. And um, right down here, we can see the price. It's already been calculated for us. If we want to know how it's been calculated, I can click on the explain button and that shows you that they've been charged the standard rates and they're charged one hour at 15 pounds. As soon as I save the booking, we can see a list of all of the bookings that have been made. Now, it might be possible that, say, on the 19th of January, they want to meet for two hours instead of one. So very easy to change that. So straight away, we can see the price has been recalculated. And we can click Save. And if we scroll this down, we can see the change that's been made in this list. Equally, it could be that on the 29th of December, they don't want to meet because it's between Christmas and New Year. And so we can easily delete that. And if we look in the month view there, you can see that it's missing. Now, it's very easy to control bookings in the calendar because I can change the duration by dragging them. Ah, oh, and it changes the price as well. And I can even change the um, room that they're booked in. So once again, that's made it cheaper for them. So we'll accept that price. Now let's assume that we've got a new customer. And our new customer is a man called John Smith. He lives locally. So uh, we're just going to enter his details. And maybe we'll enter his um, address. and it's that easy to enter the address. And what we've done is we've configured different price lists for local residents. So we've got a local residence discount. You can set up any, any number of price lists that you need. And uh, so we have set that up. And now what we're going to do is that we're going to take a booking for him. And John Smith wants to have a party. So we're going to enter that as a party and it's not a repeat booking. Now, the first thing to see is if we look at this list of rooms, um, it only lists the rooms that are available. The art group is using the side room. We can see the clashing groups. That's really useful because let's say that actually John Smith wanted to have a brass band rehearsal. And let's say that in the side room, there was a yoga class. That might be a problem because the yoga class would be disturbed. So straight away, we could see if there are any potential conflicts and we can manage those groups. We can ask if the art group can change rooms or to a different time. Or we can say to John, you know, we don't want to accept your booking. In this case, we're going to accept it. Um, we're just going to set it for two hours instead of one. And but instead of the £26 that's been calculated, we, we've agreed with John that he can have it for £20. So we can override the calculated price. I'm going to click Save, and that saved the booking. Immediately, I see this booking needs invoicing. So if I click the Invoice button, it straight away generates an invoice for John. And we can see the details there. And we can also see payment details. It's very easy to config to customize the invoice so you can set your own logo you can change text in it thank you for booking with us written at the bottom for example and down here we've got um, a template for sending an email we'll see that in just a moment so 
So if we go back to John's invoice, maybe we can charge an extra five pounds for a key deposit. So we can easily add that to the invoice and that's there. And when we're happy with it, I can save it as a PDF so that I can uh, print it out or, or send it using my email software. Or I could just click send by email. It prepares an email. It fills it out for us. This is based on that invoice settings that we've just looked at. But if I wanted to, um, I can edit it as well. And then I can click send and that sends John an, an email with the invoice attached. Now let's say that John comes to make payment. So we can go into the payments module, we select John and let's say he actually only gives us 20 pounds and he pays us by cash. So it automatically allocates that against the invoice for us. I'm going to click save. And then the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to go into the reports. Well, the reports, there's a number of reports and we're adding them by the day at the moment. So um, we could have the bookings report. Now the bookings report shows us for this week, or it could be for next month or whatever, um, all of the bookings that we've got um, set up in the room. This is really good because this means that we can then just print that off and put it on a notice board and then everyone knows where they're going when they get to your hall. They know which group they're meeting in. It's also very useful for you just to remind yourself who's booked into the um, hall at any particular time. Other things we've got, we've got the unpaid invoices report. Now remember John only paid £20 out of the 25 so we can see straight off he's listed there as owing £5. And if John says, you know what, I'd like to see a statement of my account, it's very, very simple. We can create one just with a couple of button presses and there's our statement. Balance brought forward naught. There's the invoice, there's his payment. And so we can see that there's a five pounds balance still to be paid. Very, very easy software to use. If you do get stuck, there's always help at the click of a button. So let's say you wanted to know um, how to manage a payment. Um, you could just search in the knowledge base and um, you will find out all about, for example, marking an invoice as paid. It gives you all of the instructions right there at a click of a button. And if you're still stuck, you can just click ask and then you can send a message to our support team who will get back to you as soon as they can. We hope you enjoyed looking at My Hall Wizard. If you would like to know more, visit our website, myhallwizard.com, where you can contact us or sign up for a free trial. We look forward to welcoming you into the My Hall Wizard family.